Good evening. Good evening, everybody. This is the May 3rd, 2018 meeting of the North Hamlet City Council. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the City Council President, and I'll be presiding tonight. Let me first announce the audio and video recording of these proceedings. And then we'll start with a period of public comment. It's an opportunity for members of the public to speak on any issue they wish. We'll only ask a couple of things. First, please keep your comments to three minutes or less. And also remember that we're prohibited by our rules from engaging in a back and forth with you. It's your time to give your opinion to us. I'll begin with the sign-up sheet, and then after that, anyone who's not signed up will be welcome to stand up and speak to. Uh, the first person is Mike Riffenberg. Oh, ma'am, don't worry about that. I'll call on you. Okay. Yep. And Mr. Riffenberg, if you give your name and address for the record, please. Sure. Mike Riffenberg. Excuse me. 52 Lower Road, Deerfield. And uh, I'm the publisher of the Daily Hampshire Gazette. I'm, I'm here tonight to represent the people of Northampton and the, the same people who elected you to represent them and, and the city's partners who use public notices in our paper to do business with the city as a result of their findings. I uh, first wanted to uh, address a couple of comments that were made at the last council meeting. Uh, first, uh, there was a comment about the anachronisticness of the Daily Hampshire Gazette. And uh, so my apologies for not educating our uh, community better about the newspaper and the way that it's delivered uh, to the many readers of, of the Daily Hampshire Gazette, both in print and online. And so I invite the council to come take a tour of the Daily Hampshire Gazette and learn more about that. Uh, there were some observations made about cost, attendance of hearings, uh, alternative meth methods of delivery, and, and really, um, I think this discussion is about access of information for the people. I sent each of you a link uh, to the homepage uh, for public notices for, on gazettenet.com. I hope you had a chance to uh, review it, uh, use the search function, learn more about the, the digital delivery of public notices. Um, we provide in addition to the print uh, uh, delivery. And uh, two weeks ago, I read uh, from a script and, and shared with you four elements uh, required of public notice publishing to maintain its integrity. Uh, first, they must be published by a neutral and independent party. Second, they must be accessible to the public. Third, they, may, they must be capable of being archived in a secure and accessible format. And fourth, their publication must be capable of being verified and authenticated by the publisher. Uh, so I leave you with those, those four elements again. And uh, once again, I ask you to vote no on both ordinance changes to eliminate newspaper legal notice requirements. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now uh, I have Margot Shockett Green. Hi. My name is Margot Shockett Green. I live at 85 Vernon Street in Northampton. Um, and I would like to talk to you all about the resolution that you will shortly be reviewing. Um, I think it's very important to note how much work the Youth Commission put into this. Um, and I'm the chair this year, but I know last year as well, there was um, a lot, a lot of thought put into it and how it would um, positively impact the community and how we think it would benefit the community, the school system, everyone sitting here today, and democracy as a whole. Um, I think it's very important to bring a new perspective into um, city matters and um, voting matters. And I think that we could positively change, um, every, positively impact every decision that um, people older, older than us are currently able to make. I think that we have, um, we have opinions that deserve to be heard and we have a new perspective that could positively impact the community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Ma'am, I know you wanted to speak. Would you like to be next? Okay. Feel free to come up and give your name and address for the record. Catherine Marsh, Nine Prospect Heights, Northampton. I've been working hard with my, with my partner the last few years, I said months, getting the information out about gas leaf blowers. The exhaust from one gas leaf blower is much higher in nitrous ox 
in nitrous oxide than from one car. One gas leaf blower creates as much air pollution as 50 sedans. They are spraying oil and hydrocarbons, which we inhale into our lungs and their carcinogens. The noise is horrific. Depends on where you live. Some places are worse than others. One leaf blower will produce 100 decibels at close range and 75 at 50 feet. Often two or three are going at several houses at once. The quality of life would be greatly improved here by banning them, except for, you know, like big parks, as they have, as they have been in all of the Cal state of California and several places in Mass, Massachusetts, such as Lincoln, and so it's starting all over in New Jersey. I'm tired of hanging out in the library or the Cooley Dickinson Hospital waiting room day after day. Will you help me protect our health and hearing? Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to provide public comment at this time? No? Well, if not, then we'll enter uh, our, our formal session here, and I'll ask <coughs> the role of the City Council to be called. Councilor Bidwell. Here. Present. Councilor White. Here. Councilor Fine. Here. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. Councilor Here. Councilor Here. Here. Uh, seeing as there are no public hearings and no updates from me, are there any updates from committee chairs today? Are there any recognitions or one minute announcements from councilors? Councilor Barch. <laughs> Um, I would just like to announce a um, public forum, and it's sponsored by me, City Councilor Marianne LaBarge, the City of Northampton, and Just Healthy, LLC. May 14th, 7 o'clock p.m., R.K. Finn, Ryan Road School. I'm, I'm, the reason why I'm doing this, because the property, Willard's Gravel Pit, was put up for auction. And we have had um, some very interested people on two parcels of the gravel pit. And I've had since last year working with Wayne Fiden and many residents in Woodland, um, Cardinal Way, of uh, preserving the open space in that site area. And it's absolutely beautiful. So there is some movement happening and I'm working with Wayne and the planning department to have this open public hearing. I want the transparency and the communication. 375 letters have been sent to abutters and we went beyond that. Plus I am placing signs at certain corners. Well, um, I've talked with my residents so that we have the transparency and the communication of letting everybody know of this open public forum. Anyways, the proposed property right now is we're looking at a site of cannabis redevelopment by Just Healthy LLC. So I'm hoping that everybody in Ward 6, they're hearing this and you're invited and counselors also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other announcements? Councilor Klein. Well, I'd like to invite everyone to something in Leeds because um, we don't see everyone out in Leeds all the time. Uh, the Leeds Civic Association over the last year prepared historical signage. Um, Leeds has a really fascinating history um, in all these different ways from the flood, to the big flood in the late uh, 1800s to um, the development of the silk mills there. So historical signage was prepared, really beautiful historical signage was prepared, and I think, I can't remember how many sites, something like 10 different sites. And there will be a historical signage celebration and self-guided walking tour um, on May 12th from 11 to 12.30. The rain date is the following day, May 13th. Um, there will be the walking tour all at the same time. It's self-guided, but everyone goes at the same time. And then there will be um, refreshments on the Leeds Main Street Green. And viewing of the Hall of the Mansion um, up on, the, on Yankee Hill. 
So May 12th, 11 to 12.30, and everyone in the city is invited. Thanks. Thank you very much. Other announcements? Councilor Bigwell. <clears throat> um, also on May 12th, and this could fit in before folks had the leads, <laughs> from, from 9 to 1 uh, on Saturday, May 12th, at Smith Oak is the annual plant sale for the benefit of the schools. That's, uh, Save Our Schools, Northampton Education Foundation, collaborate on this. It's a wonderful event. Get your, get your plants, support the schools. Thank you. Anyone else? And everyone's weekend, basically. <laughs> there you go. Another fun yeah, we activity. program the whole weekend for you. The afternoon's still free. All right. Unless there's anything else lined up for that weekend. Um, we, well, let me ask the mayor if he has any, anything else. No? Nothing from the mayor today. So we will go to um, 18.081, which is the question of the appointment of Marie Westberg as Director of Senior Services. This appointment received the positive recommendation from the Committee on City Services on April 23rd. And I'll note that uh, according to the City Charter, Section 210, uh, the Council refers candidates for appointment as a department head or as a member of a multi-member body to a standing committee, which for us is City Services. And that committee reviews each candidate and then makes recommendations uh, to the full Council within a specified time period. Um, so let me just, uh, what, I, what I'm going to do is ask the mayor to come up and introduce the appointee who is then welcome to speak um, as well. But just to expand on that, I know that this has been a topic of great community discussion. And I want to make sure that everyone in the chambers tonight and everyone watching at home knows that we are following a very established process. The role of the council under the city charter, ratified by, by the voters of the city, is to take the appointments that come from the mayor and make an up or down vote based on an assessment that, that we hold. Uh, that is our charge, um, and it is not possible for us to substitute or make changes or amendments. We have to follow, I think, um, a, a process that we rely on for good government, the process we rely on for every other appointee and that is the process we'll be, we'll be following tonight. And that is what the Committee on City Services played a role in in April. So I'll say that, and I'd like to invite the mayor to come up and introduce Ms. Westberg, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and good evening, uh, members of the City Council. Um, uh, as, I, as, as the Council President indicated, um, I am pleased this evening to, uh, to introduce to you uh, Marie Westberg, uh, my appointee to be our new Director of Senior Services. Uh, Ms. Westberg has an extensive 25-year background in social services, um, including seven years in her current position as Director of the Town of Williamsburg Senior Center and Council on Aging. Um, Ms. Westberg has, uh, during her tenure there, she's significantly expanded programming and outreach to seniors, uh, formed important collaborations with regional agencies, and been successful in securing grants to support her department's efforts. Um, prior to her work at the Senior Center, she was a business owner and uh, creator of the Art Star Creative Arts Lounge, offering contract work with social service organizations, private lessons, workshops, and camps. And her previous professional experience also includes work in the field of mental health as a psychiatric counselor, psychotherapist, and art therapist. Um, uh, I should also note that uh, Ms. Westberg has um, been serving uh, as temporary director this week uh, at the Senior Center. And, um, and so, um, it's, again, it's my pleasure to, uh, to introduce Ms. Westberg to you tonight. And I hope that you will uh, give her a positive recommendation and, and affirm her. Thank you. Thank you. Please, Ms. Westberg. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, I, I've had a good week at the Senior Center. People have been very welcoming, and um, I'm uh, excited about the future of all the endeavors that we'll be doing together there with the seniors. Um, I, I wanted to report a little bit on yesterday. There was a, um, a job fair with the EARN initiative that Linda Desmond started, and that was, um, I think, uh, over 150 people attended that. So just to go over a little bit about w what I said in the subcommittee meeting, um, I'm, I'm really excited about working with the ADA initiative, uh, the commission, and um, also 
working on healthy aging and uh, city planning, making, uh, working to make Northampton an age-friendly city. Um, and um, many of the, the initiatives that Linda Desmond has started are, are really on that route already. Um, so um, I've met a lot of people this week. I've been welcomed uh, with open arms. And um, I think people are looking forward to to contributing so I think we we'll have a good team there and I've gotten to know some of the staff and we're, we're starting to sort of form some um, working relationships that I think are going to be very positive so good thank thank you very much for that introduction and if you wouldn't mind remaining up there I'll ask the council if anyone has any comments or questions for Ms. Westberg uh, Councilor LaBarge thank you. When we interviewed you on city services, I directly asked you a question, Ms. Westberg. In regards, have you ever been an ADA coordinator? And you said no. Correct. Uh, correct. And you also said they did not have one. Anyways, I always take it amongst myself, and I went through, which is an update through the state on ADA coordinators, okay? I just want to let you know this. Williamsburg, Charlene Nardi, who's your ADA coordinator? And I'm a little confused because you had told me, no, there was not one. Right, well, there isn't a dedicated position for that. Um, she, she acts as the ADA coordinator, but she also does everything. Well, they, so all these cities and towns they're broken down, okay? Planning department, the fire department, even though they are an entity, they still are an ADA coordinator. Correct. Because it says it right here for your town. I just wanted to let you know that. Right, but I, they don't have a dedicated ADA coordinator position. So she, she acts, Basically, I, I think that the town administrator, this town administrator is a new position as well. So the select board oversees everything. Right. Now that we have a town administrator in Williamsburg, she oversees everything as well. And there are some regional initiatives, like the conservation committee has, has staffing that is regionalized. I understand that. Right. Because with her, she's under town administrator slash ADA coordinator. And my question was, I asked you, and you said, no, we don't have one. So I just wanted to verify this. Then today, when I had time, we get this letter from Pat Shaughnessy, okay, every one of us counselors, in regards about me questioning you about an ADA coordinator. And I had already done my own research, okay, that she knew who that person was. So I just wanted to let you know that. Okay. Good. Thank hey, you. Any other, thank you, counselor. Any other? You're welcome. Uh, counselor Dwight, please. Ms. Westberg, pleasure to see you. And an opportunity to uh, review your application as part of the committee. And actually, it was um, more than pleased and proud to have the opportunity to forward that on the merits of our, our recommendations. Um, I think it's worth noting, as far as ADA coordinator, an ADA coordinator, of course, our two previous ADA coordinators, which would be Patty Shaughnessy and Linda Desmond, neither of which, neither of whom, um, was an ADA coordinator pri previous to the job. It was learned on the job, which I suspect you're probably going to learn as well. Um, and, and it's clearly a very important position, as has, uh, particularly as Northampton struggles and Councilor LaBarge knows this very well, because Councilor LaBarge has been on the Disabilities Commission for, for a long time. We'll be generous. <laughs> so, and uh, I think it's worth noting that uh, in uh, I did have an opportunity to interview um, Ms. Westberg, and I was very impressed and excited at the prospect of you being one of our candidates. Um, I also concur with the mayor's decision and choice in this instance. Um, I think that, uh, you know, this, as, as the council president described, essentially our job is to determine whether the mayor's selection um, is qualified to serve in the position that they are. 
uh, being appointed to. And um, no one has challenged that, nor should they, because you are more than qualified. So in that regard, I think that you know it, the vote shouldn't be all that difficult here. So I won't make it any more painful for you to have to endure any more conversation with <laughs> me. But anyway, thank you very much, and I appreciate you submitting your application. And also, I understand that uh, we poached you from Belchertown um, and Williamsburg, so we have two communities that we have <coughs> some differences with, I suppose. But but I'm grateful that that we have the opportunity to have you serve here. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to say that I, I take the ADA coordination um, commission commi uh, responsibility very seriously, and I, I did meet with some of the members of that committee yesterday. Um, so I, I, I think what I told them is I, I'm willing to learn anything I need to learn, and that I, I will be a strong advocate, um, and that I, I am very good at, at pulling in resources to help myself when I don't know everything I need to know um, and I'm, I'm not afraid to admit that I don't know everything so um, I, I won't pretend that I do um, but I I am a hard worker and I I will do my due diligence so and are there any counselors who have not spoken who would like to speak at this time um, Councilor Bidwell and then we'll go to Councilor Labarge again uh, I would just like to add that uh, uh, I, I enjoy very much the conversation we were able to have in, in, in City Services Committee. And I was quite impressed with uh, your preparedness for the job and some of the new initiatives that you have in mind. And just to reiterate what the Council President has said, um, I mean, it's, it looks like our job, I think our job is to see if there's anything wrong with the process by which uh, the Mayor's appointment came to us. Uh, and is there anything which on its surface, based on the information we have, that would suggest you're not qualified for the job? And the, the process, as best I can tell, and actually we do know a lot about that process, I think was a by-the-book process. Uh, and I think everything that we have seen about you and heard from you suggests that you're very well qualified for the position. So I, um, uh, I think it's, it, it's clear that uh, we should, with, with some enthusiasm, be, be supporting your uh, your appointment and if it's appropriate I'll put a motion on the floor uh, that uh, that we confirm the appointment of Marie Westbury as director of senior services second the motion is made and seconded um, is there any comment to that question no um, then well, let me if I may close by by thanking you for coming um, to my mind the purpose was to allow the full council to conduct this kind of diligence that the Committee on City Services also did, because that's our responsibility as a council. Uh, but it's also important that the wider public got a chance to hear you uh, speak and hear about your qualifications. The separation of powers we have in our city government, which we mentioned, the mayor making appointments in this case, the council uh, providing um, scrutiny of them is is not a one-time thing it's uh, a feature of our government that we try to uh, provide um, oversight in a general sense not in the sense that we manage city departments in any way but that we're there um, to work with city departments when necessary for example the Committee on City Services will bring in many different departments over the course of a year as counselors know this to say how's it going uh, what are the programs you're working on? Can we help? So I just would like to close by saying I hope you realize that um, not only are we here to scrutinize your qualifications, we're here to support you because everyone in the city has an interest in uh, the uh, Department of Senior Services uh, succeeding and for you to succeed. So you should know we have that ongoing commitment to you. Thank you, and thank you very much. So with that, I would like to call the question. And I'll ask for a roll call on the question of appointing Ms. Westberg as Director of Senior Services. Yes. 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 Yes.
We'll move on to the consent agenda, <coughs> which approves the following items. First, the approval <coughs> of the April 5th, 2018 minutes. Um, various appointments, which will be the equivalent to referral to the committee on city services. Those are to the Board of Health, forgive me for any mispronunciations that are forthcoming, uh, Dr. Cynthia Suopsis? Suopsis. Suopsis. Okay. Suopsis. You got it. Suopsis. Uh, 120 calls, Meadow Avenue, Northampton, uh, from July 2018 to June 2021. Uh, Laurent Levy, 4 School Street, Northampton, uh, July 2018 through 2021. To the Conservation Commission, Jack Finn, 57 King Street, uh, Suite B, Northampton, from July 2018 to July 2021. To the Historical Commission, Barbara Blumenthal, 39 Chapel Street, July 2018 to June 2021. Um, am I still on the right one? Yes. Uh, to the Housing Partnership, James Reese, uh, 108 Coles Meadow Road, Northampton, July 2018 to June 2021. Human Rights Commission, Joel Morris, 51 Vernon Street, July 2018, June 2021. License Commission, Brian Campadelli, 223 Cardinal Way, Florence, uh, July 2018 to June 2021. Are there any removals from the consent agenda? I'd like to move approval of the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 No abstentions. Consent agenda is approved. Thank you very much. We will proceed to resolutions now. And we have 18.097, a resolution to lower the voting age for Northampton municipal elections. This is the first reading. Uh, if there's no objection, I will read the resolution and open it up for debate once we get a motion. This is upon the recommendation of the Northampton Mayor's Youth Commission, Councilor William H. Dwight. This is R18.097, a resolution to lower the voting age for Northampton municipal election. Whereas the right to vote is elemental to democracy, and that right should be protected and guaranteed to all qualified citizens. And whereas 16 and 17 year olds possess the same critical analytic intelligence as 18 year olds, and whereas a Massachusetts 16 year olds have been deemed able to consent to sexual intercourse, obtain a learner's permit and driver's license, get married with parental consent, work a full time job and pay taxes. And whereas Austria, Argentina, Brazil, Scotland, Switzerland uh, lowered the, their voting age to 16 for municipal and in some cases national elections and studies showed that the younger voters were no less informed than their older counterparts. And whereas the largest portion of Northampton's municipal budget is the school budget, and whereas most people voting in Northampton did not go through the modern Northampton public school system, but most 16-year-olds living in Northampton currently are in that school system, giving them an important and unique perspective on school issues. And whereas studies have shown 16-year-olds have been the largest age demographic to closely follow certain votes, such as the following, excuse me, such as following the Scottish referendum to leave the United Kingdom. And whereas early voter engagement increases civic participation later in life, which is vital to a democracy. And whereas turnout among all voters in the United States is decreasing, and a push to vote is much needed for younger citizens. And whereas younger citizens are demonstrating their desire to influence the government that serves them by demonstrating, for, in a different sense, for demonstrating for sensible gun, gun laws to prevent gun violence. And whereas expanding suffrage to people who previously were not able to vote is good for democracy by every measure, and whereas Massachusetts legislation has advanced a civic education requirement to pr promote critical thinking and participation among younger people, and whereas 16-year-olds may now pre-register to vote in Massachusetts, which may provide a logistical framework for their participation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the sponsors call on upon the Northampton City Council to petition the Massachusetts legislature to allow the city of Northampton to establish a minimum voting age for residents of Northampton of 16 for all municipal elections. I would accept a motion on this resolution. Take a motion. Is it Second. seconded? So it's on the floor. I invite one of the sponsors to introduce it. Sure. Um, the, uh, as you heard Margot Shaka Green express, uh, she is the current uh, chair of the Northampton Youth Commission. This has been in discussion now for almost two and a half years, um, massaging it, trying to doing analysis. And in fact, actually, all these assertions in here do have citations. We thought we'd spare you the citations, but they are available. And we'll include them in the final document, I think, would probably be the best way to serve. But. Um, 
I think the best way to put it, and I, I, you know, there is an allusion to it. Um, on March 24th, um, just five weeks following the shootings at the Parkland School in Florida, uh, in five weeks' time, throughout this country, people between the ages of 16 and 18 organized one of the largest demonstrations, mass demonstrations, that have been witnessed in this country, which is saying something, particularly recently, and especially in Northampton. It was organized, run, managed, and performed basically exclusively by this cohort, this cohort that we tend to fob off as being too young or too callow. And it's interesting, when I first posited this, actually, when the Youth Commission was discussing this last year, I actually wrote a column about it and posted it. And it's interesting, the pushback and the response from the community on this, so there was lots of support, but then there were a lot of things like they're not mature enough, they don't own property, they, uh, they won't think for themselves, they'll vote the way their parents do. It's, a, it's a, 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 just a means by which the liberals are trying to uh, you know, stack the deck. I mean, it's interesting, a lot of these arguments, of course, we've heard used before when we were trying to deny suffrage to African Americans and deny suffrage to uh, women. And you know, this whole issue about being a property owner, we got rid of that some time ago, thank God. You did not have, once upon a time when we first established voting laws, only the one man, one vote thing was a ruse. It was basically one man who owned property, which included slaves, could vote, and the other men could not if you did not. Suffrage is, is critical, obviously. Voting is critical, and we have an anemia when it starts to come to elections. As far as other qualifications, you need to be a U.S. citizen. Uh, in some states, you can't be a felon. And you have to be over the age of 18. That's it. You don't need any other qualifications. You could, you, you don't have to be brilliant. You don't have to be good looking. You don't have to be wise. But I would argue that actually, recently, I think the youth, particularly in this community and other communities, proven wisdom is uh, very evident in that group, and maybe not so evident in our group, because I would hold up as Exhibit 1 the President of the United States. So discerning voters in the nation voted for <coughs> Donald Trump for President. I'd like to ask more people to join the club who participate and maybe expand our conversation <laughs> discussion. And I think the Youth Commission has already uh, demonstrated, and the youth <coughs> of Northampton demonstrated a desire to participate in the governance that has an impact and effect on them. So um, <coughs> it, it was. This has been really exciting for me. It's been a great project to work with them on this. This is uh, uh, it will be unique if should if if Bill Galvin decides this time that it's okay. This has been tried before, <coughs> and if or if the legislature decides to send it back. <coughs> Northampton may have the opportunity to be the first community in the state of Massachusetts to do this. But we're not the first to think of it. And there are a lot of other communities that are queued up to do the same thing. There's a Hilltown Collect a group that Holyoke is considering uh, the same thing. To give agency to the younger voters in their community in the form of a vote. So, and actually I'm, I'm fairly confident I'm, I'm speaking to a rather receptive body on this issue, but the fact is I think I would like to recommend that this be referred to legislative matters for a more expansive conversation about this and for possible amendment. I know that <laughs> Council Bidwell has some, some uh, Scribner's issues to discuss and, that, and, I, and I welcome any contribution on this. We, uh, this was done by committee and I would just assume, I think, being massaged and, and polished by committee would be great. I'd be grateful for any, any energy that uh, my, my fellow counselors would be willing to donate, so. Counselor from Ward 4. Um, so since, well, March 24th and before with the organizing, you're right that this is, uh, youth civic engagement has become a national topic um, in general, but specifically, this has become a, a big topic around um, lowering the voting age and, you know, the, the Washington Post, New York Times, NPR, they've all done opinion pieces on it. Um, 
So there are, you're right, there are a lot of communities that are talking about this, but I just, I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge, and, and Margo mentioned it, and you mentioned that this is something that the Youth Commission's been working on for a while, um, and that's true, and I just, I wanna say that I know that this is something that you, Councillor Dwight, have been talking about and thinking about for even longer than that, so I think it should be acknowledged that, that you were well in front of the curve uh, when thinking about this issue and, um, and the importance of bringing younger people into the fold and, and engaging them civically and giving them the right to vote. So credit where it's due. Thanks. Uh, Councilor Klein. Um, thank you, Councilor Dwight and the Youth Commission, if there's anyone still here from it, for this piece of work, it's really <coughs> important. And I um, just wanted to say two quick things. My The best, the most sophisticated and robust political discussions that I have right now in my life are with my 15-year-old and my 17-year-old nieces. And um, and my 17-year-old niece was one of the main organizers in, in her um, city of Medford to um, to create the, the March for Our Lives there. So I see firsthand how um, youth really contribute to um, our political process um, and, and just kind of social betterment. So I'm all for this. Um, and I just thought it was important, and you can probably speak to this better than I can, uh, Councillor Dwight, but I, I understand that this is a home rule issue, that we can't as a city, this is coming to us as a resolution as opposed to uh, an ordinance because we don't, we as a council cannot um, put forward or change legislation in terms of voting age. Um, so I don't know if you wanna to speak to that just to educate people a little bit more about it, but I do know that, I, I don't know how many years ago it was, four or five years ago, that the city of Lowell tried to lower the yes. voting age and um, it was ruled unconstitutional either by, I don't know, the, the state Secretary Supreme state. Court, was it, or the Secretary of State. So, so people have tried to do that in different cities in Massachusetts, or at least in Lowell I know of. Um, so I just think that that's important for people to understand why this is coming to us, I think, in this format. And I th um, man, yes. uh, you're absolutely right. We, we do not have the authority to declare that, but, and that's why this is um, essentially a resolution appealing to the council to draft a home rule petition. And, and in fact, actually, this has been discussed. We need, there are some charter changes that we need to do for a number of things, uh, small details like <laughs> special elections issues that don't work and things like that. Um, and I and I would like to see this folded into that appeal, and I think soon we should draft it. The idea is, in all likelihood, if the legislature so deems, they would probably send it back to us to put on the ballot to have the city vote on this issue. And so, uh, that's my. The hope is that if this pa the resolution passes, as I said, I'm fairly comfortable with that. Then, then it's incumbent upon us to work together and figure out how we would draft a home rule petition to the legislature to see, to, to send off to them. And vote, well, vote on it here, and then send it off to them. And <coughs> we'll return with the favor. Uh, and we'll see what Mr. Galvin has to say, too. But I, I suspect that unconstitutional ruling is challengeable, easily challengeable. <coughs> there, and I think <coughs> the stage has been set particularly by these demonstrations, recent demonstrations, that I think there's a, uh, a broadened community receptiveness to the notion that um, we are watching the people we define as our children do the work that we should have done. And so I, perhaps the secretary could be persuaded to suddenly recognize that this is constitutionally correct. Um. I, I, I very much appreciate the hard work that's been put in over two years and, and more. Um, and I'm supportive of it. And if, if it were to come to be, I think we'd be enormously proud to be the first or one of the first communities in Massachusetts to lower voting age in municipal elections to age 16. Uh, I, too, had a question about the, the, the process. Councilor Dwight, are you, are you suggesting that we come up with a process for recommending charter changes of this which would of which this would be one 
or as opposed to a standalone home rule petition? I gather it's the former you're suggesting. I, I, I th the reason is that th we do have some critical issues that need to be addressed, and I figure, I mean, obviously circumstances have changed. We've lost our representative. We've just lost our senator. Uh, the people who would carry these two items forward, or at least would be our banner carriers, uh, aren't available to us now. So that I, I, you know, I have to acknowledge the fact that 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 is more than problematic for not just this, but for so many things. But um, yeah, the idea was that we'd probably fold them in together, send them off as a package uh, to be reviewed by um, by the legislature. I understand that the. There was some discussion also uh, recently uh, about some petitions, uh, petitions that might be forwarded by the mayor, for instance, relative to uh, undocumented residents being able to have the right to vote. I don't know if we incorporate those or if the timeline's affected or not, but that's something we would have to strategize. Again, once uh, should this be accepted and that be basically taking the temperature of the council and we want to proceed that way then I think then we have to then we we would do that calculus afterwards anyone else Councilor Nash um, so as somebody who's been working with youth all of my life um, that um, I just want to say that um, I really appreciate the work of the Youth Commission once again I mean the Youth Commission has been developing stuff like this for a long time and um, and, and pushing us forward and this is this is probably one of the most remarkable things uh, that's come out of the Youth Commission and um, I, I'm a, a super fan of all of the work that you guys have done over the years I've filled in a few times for Councilor Dwight and um, it, it's 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 really a fabulous little gem that um, started with uh, Mayor H Higgins and is continued under Mayor Narkowitz uh, it's a great way for our youth to become involved in the civic process. Um, I mean, it's, it, what, one of my favorite meetings is that first organizational meeting where they elect a, you know, a chair and who's going to be a secretary and they're kind of figuring it out and um, and by you know a few weeks into it they 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 know how to run a a, a public meeting. So and and this is the kind of stuff that comes out of there. Um, and we should all be very proud of the work that they, they're able to produce here. So I'm going to fully support this and uh, wherever we send it today, and, uh, I thank them for the work. Councilor Barge. Yes. Um, I also want to thank the Youth Commission. Um, Councilor Dwight, you talk about me with the Commission on Disabilities. You've been belong to them for quite a long time, and a lot of effort has been put into the Youth Commission. Um, I'm going to support this too, no matter where we're going to send it to legislative matters. But I have to say, and I have to echo what Councilor Dwight has said, a lot of effort has been put in to the democracy of our youths in the city. The gun violence, it showed how much support and hard work that they put into it, and we're all there in support for them. And this is awesome. I agree with this. I think that. The limit should be dropped down to 16 years old. And to me, when you go out and work, and whatever you do, I mean, you go and get a permit or a driver's license, you go out and work full time, you deserve this. What's the difference between 16 and 18? So I support this. Councilor. Uh, I'll just, just add that I, 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 uh, I too would support it being referred to legislative affairs so it can get more attention, more airtime, more visibility, more discussion. I think it'd be great. Uh, Councilor Dwight referred to a couple of Scrivener's errors that I pointed out. I won't bother us all here. Maybe just... We'll do it then. Yeah. Just, just yeah. Uh, submit it before it comes back for second reading. I would just... The one thing I would mention is the final, therefore be it resolved. I think what we want to say, be it resolved that the Northampton City Council petitions the Massachusetts legislature. We have already been petitioned by the sponsors and now. So I would just, that would be one of those minor tweaks that I would suggest. Well, the, my only concern is that I would suggest that this is the petition to the legislature, and I think that actually has to be cobbled in a different way. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, <coughs> the petition has a particular format that's, that this would not conform to. 
I see what you mean. So that that's why you, you wanted to keep it in the form of the sponsors correct. Right. I see what you Okay. So noted. Um, might it be the case that the Committee on Legislative Matters comes back not with this resolution or with this re resolution and an actual order? Yeah, uh, pending language. pending the vote, yeah, depending on the determination of the vote, although I'm mm -hmm. counting and it seems pretty mm -hmm. prospects look good. Yeah. So uh, it, I think that's the place to actually craft that. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. I would like to do that. Yeah, I, I appreciate the, the process. It's like a mini constitutional convention. Right. It's even a mini charter review. I mean, we do a charter review every 10 years, and this is sort of um, in addition to that. So I like the idea that we're going to have a process before it even goes to the legislature for people's comments, and we may get some interesting suggestions to uh, to craft it to our uh, to the maximum benefit of, of Northampton. So great, I support this too, for the record. Anyway, <laughs> any other discussion? Um, is there a motion to refer this to legislative matters? So moved. Second. Any discussion on the referral? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions. So the matter is referred. Thank you very much. Great. Um, let's see. No presentations tonight. We will recess for the Committee on Finance, starring David. Thank you. Very short meeting it will be. Um, Laura, would you call our roll, please? Council Murphy. Here. Council Clark. Present. Here. So first item is approval of the minutes of our last meeting. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Any corrections? Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And uh, financial orders. The first one is 18.094, order to authorize the mayor to sign a vendor contract for up to five years. Uh, order that whereas Northampton will seek to replace optical voting equipment for 2018 and whereas the city, city whereas it's in the city's interest to be able to sign a three-year contract including a maintenance agreement that extends for an additional two years and whereas the city council approve approval is required for contracts over three years now order that the mayor is authorized to sign a vendor contract for up to five years on such terms as the mayor determines are agreeable do we have a motion, Take a motion. second Second. And here's the mayor to answer questions. Yeah, this is actually a, an order that I've filed at the request of the city clerk, uh, Pam Powers, who's here tonight. As you know, in the um, capital improvement program uh, this year, uh, you approved a funding request to uh, fund these new uh, voting systems that we now need to implement to upgrade our, our, our outdated and old failing voting machines. Um, so this is actually allowing us to sign a contract that would extend beyond three years. This is the vote that we've done many times um, for technology, for textbooks, for any number of things. And state law requires any contract longer than three years I can't sign without getting authorization. So um, I would also defer to uh, the city clerk if you had any specific questions about the contract or, or what this is for. But that's the <coughs> basic purpose of the order. Um, any questions for the mayor or the clerk? Good with the, the we talked about this capital improvements a little bit. So, with no questions of the mayor and the clerk, all in favor of a positive recommendation for finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And the next is 18095, an order uh, relative to a taking on Garfield Avenue, whereas uh, by order 18.024, the city council voted to lay out and accept a public as public way a parcel of land shown as Garfield Avenue extension. Uh, it's 30,000 or 3,082.4 square feet on a plan entitled Commonwealth of Massachusetts Street Acceptance Plan of Garfield Avenue Extension prepared for the City of Northampton in Hampshire County dated March 6, 2017 and whereas in the order uh, to complete the layout of the extension of Garfield Avenue the City Council must authorize the acquisition of the land now therefore it be ordered that the mayor is hereby authorized to acquire by purchase gift eminent domain or otherwise that parcel of land shown as Garfield Avenue Extension of 3,082.4 square feet on a plan entitled Commonwealth of Massachusetts Street Acceptance Plan of the Garfield Avenue Extension prepared for the City of Northampton, Hampshire County, Massachusetts dated March 6, 2017. No appropriation is needed for this acquisition. We have a motion. Of Make a motion. Second? Second. Uh, questions for the mayor on this one? We've seen it before. This is just the companion to the other order that you adopted that would actually formally accept that little sliver of uh, Garfield as part of the full public way. 
and a hearing was was duly held yes. on that subject. Yes. And petition submitted. Right. So any questions going once, going twice? All in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 I know of no business. Does anyone know of any other new business? And that's all, folks. A motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. And now we will take up some of those <laughs> orders. 18.094, order authorizing the mayor to sign a vendor contract for up to five years. Is there a motion to approve this? Make order? a motion. Second. 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 Any discussion on the order? As for, uh, would our clerk like to provide the information? Or? If you have any questions, I can certainly questions that might have. Are, are there questions from the council? I, I think we, well, briefly, this is equipment that we need to conduct yeah, we, elections. Right. So our current equipment is 22 years old mm -hmm. and uh, well past uh, what we would have expected for the equipment to be lasting. Um, and we've been advised by the state as well as um, by our current vendor, es &S, to replace the equipment. Um, and this was one of those things that because of the co total cost of the project, we needed to go up, out and solicit bids. Um, we did that and we will be using a new uh, vendor if you approve us to do so tonight. Um, and it included as part of that package will be uh, a five-year warranty agreement with uh, the new contract. Thank you. Oh, Councilor Dwight. Uh, and what would the voters' experience be? Would the uh, will it, the process be identical or very similar? Would it be connecting well, arrows and so so instead of connecting the line, it will be filling in a dot, a circle to identify what um, what candidate you're voting for. Um, you'll still be able to feed your uh, equipment. I mean, uh, your ballot through the equipment through the optical scanner. Uh, and instead of getting a sort of a readout on a digital display, uh, I'm sorry, an analog display, it will now tell you if there's any problems with the ballot on a digital display. So it's a little bit different. Um, I understand that the, uh, the town of East Hampton has been using the equipment for five years and they, they really um, think very highly of the equipment as well as working with the LHS vendor so and uh, would it expedite ballot results any chance or is that still you have to wait till someone comes down and well that would be a different equipment purchase so I'm oh, happy to come back okay. and talk to you at <laughs> <laughs> future point in time enough, but, okay. but right now the process would still work the same uh, we would still tabulate at the end of the evening and then the results would be brought back down to City Hall uh, for us to um, to tabul tabulate um, but there is there is an equipment available that will allow us to make it a little bit more, do that a little bit more quickly, and and uh, the option is there for us to purchase it. Thank you, Councillor Klein. I had two questions, but I was listening so intently to that I have to remember what they were. Um, so I should probably understand this, but we're talking about a contract we essentially lease this equipment this isn't a purchase of equipment it's, it's a purchase we would purchase the equipment so the vendor contract is just for the maintenance over the uh, period so so as part of the contract um, we get a two-year warranty for all of the equipment we're looking to have uh, beyond that two-year warranty we would like to understand what the charges would be for a, um, a one-year maintenance agreement and so this this contract um, it, it, when I uh, put together the specifications I asked them to maintain the same price for the maintenance agreement for three years um, and essentially they came both vendors that uh, uh, sent bids uh, indicated what that price would be uh, and, and so in order to do, to sign a contract to incorporate the specifications that I had put together, it would include the two-year warranty period plus the additional three years beyond that warranty period. That's helpful. Thank you. And um, the other question is uh, slightly related to what's already been asked, but 
will there, because the process will be only, I know, slightly different, and it sounds like it will be fairly simple, will there be an effort to kind of educate voters about, you know, how this looks different and that they're going to be going into a different situation? So one thing that the vendor has already provided us with is a um, video specific to Northampton to explain the, vo the voting process, how people will mark their ballots, and how they'll feed them into the equipment. So the plan will be to make that, avail that video available on our website, as well as uh, perhaps with NCTV to um, uh, air it on their channel so that people will have an opportunity to see, know what to expect when they go in the voting booth and then deliver their ballot to the voting equipment. Is it possible to actually do it on site as people, before people enter to, to screen the video? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, it, it might be. We have seven voting locations, so it would be a matter of trying to figure out how to display the, the, uh, the video at those seven locations, but I can inquire about okay. that and see, you know, what we might be able to do. Yeah, kind of far afield from that's awesome. voting on here. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you. Schoolhouse rock kind of Schoolhouse theme thing. Rock. <laughs> Any other comments? Oh, counselor. Uh, as of what election will, will this uh, new equipment be? Well, the second, the second order on the agenda tonight um, is asking for you to um, discontinue use of the, the old equipment and begin using the new equipment with the primary, with the state primary. So September 4th. Okay. That'll give us enough time to get, uh, finish the contract, get the equipment here, uh, train people in house. Of course, the election workers have to be trained as well as, as um, the people who are gonna be using the equipment. So there's a whole education component <coughs> that I'm working on to make this <coughs> I have a quick question. I apologize. I, it just occurred to me. Um, we've talked about some charter changes. One thing we talk about sometimes, especially relative to special elections, is condensing preliminaries and general elections into a single one. And we sometimes discuss the possibility of ranked choice voting, which is one method of accomplishing that. And so I'm wondering if you know offhand, or if not, if you could get the information whether the new voting equipment could accommodate such a system, should we adopt it? I, I can take a look at that. I don't have that answer for you tonight, but I'll certainly take a look at it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, good. Are we ready to vote on this? Or? Okay, so thank you, Clerk Powers. Is there a, we have the motion, do we not? Okay, then I'll ask for a roll call. Okay. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. 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 Councillor Shera. Yes. 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 The order is approved unanimously, and we proceed to eighteen point zero nine five, an order of Garfield Avenue taking. Is there a motion to approve this? So moved. To approve. Any discussion on the order? Uh, not. I'd ask for roll call. Councillor White. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. 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 Okay. The order is approved unanimously. We have three orders on second reading. The first is 18.083, order to appropriate $15,482 from free cash to health department for emergency preparedness and activities. Any, is there a motion on this? Move to approve. Or second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Yes. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Daywell. Yes. 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 Orders approved. Eighteen point zero eight four. Order to reprogram MPS generator of twenty four thousand dollars to Leeds parking lot paving phase two. Second reading. Approved. Second. Any discussion on the order? Roll call. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. 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 Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Yes. Orders approved. Eighteen point zero eight six. Order to appropriate free cash 
in the amount of $50,000 of structural repairs at Memorial Hall. Is there okay, okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? And we'll call whenever we're ready. Sure. Murphy. Yes. 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 Approved. 18.056. In order to appropriate Mass General Law Chapter 23M, the Pace Act. Second. Discussion on this. This was passed the last council meeting and it was amended. It was amended. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no further discussion on adopting the Pace Act. For roll call on this. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bigwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. This is the companion order that you've heard about. <clears throat> 18.093 in order of discontinuing the Optic Eagle 2 voting system and approving use of the image cast precinct optical scanner and tabulator system. I'll note for purpose of process, um, the city clerk has requested two readings on this day to accommodate the requirement that a certified copy of the order discontinuing use of the old equipment and approving the use of the new system must be received by the elections division by May 7th, 2018. Is there a motion to approve this order? Make a motion. Any discussion on this? Clerk Powers, do you have anything to add? <coughs> you sort of I outlined it. That notation was there. Okay. It, it, Okay. Not said as eloquently as you would have said it, I'm sure. So if there's no more discussion, we'll ask for a roll call. Okay. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. 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 Second. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? All those in favor of spending rules, please say aye. 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 No abstentions. Rules are suspended. Second reading. Second. Okay. Any discussion on second reading? Okay. Roll call, please. Uh, Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. And Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Um, there are two ordinances that have not yet been referred, so we cannot act on them. The first is 18.096, roads taken ordinance. Um, is there a desire for me to read this ordinance into the record? Um, um, let me just pull it up here. Put it up on the screen. Oh, here it is. Okay, good. So let me l allow me to do that. Um, this is an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, be ordained by the city council and uh, uh, assembled. Um, this adds a section to the zoning code 350-63. Uh, reduction of dimensional and density regulations be amended by adding a new subsection as follows. Uh, D, when land is taken by the city or the commonwealth for public purposes not specified in the section above, and when such conveyance renders the remaining remainder of the lot non-conforming or as to a pre-existing non-conforming lot increases its non-conformity with the dimensional requirements of the zoning ordinance, that the remainder lot shall be considered to be a protected non-conforming lot subject to the provisions of section 350-9. Uh, subsection one, if the remainder lot, um, if the remainder lot, it is not held in common uh, with any adjoining parcels and two, if the remainder lot has a minimum of 3,750 square feet of lot size, 50 feet of frontage, and a minimum of 10 feet sep of setback from all property lines, regardless of the zoning district. And third, if the remainder lot is in a commercial or industrial district, the 10 foot setback requirement is measured from either a building or a parking lot, whichever is closer to the front lot line. Move to refer to Sorry. legislative matters. Okay. And second, does it have to go anywhere else? Just legislative matters? It is a zoning yep. ordinance, I believe. Planning has it automatically, does it not? Uh, the, planning the, the only place planning. it has to go here is legislative matters. Okay, good. But so, being sent in anywhere else you want. Any, any discussion on the referral to legislative matters? 
Uh, all those in favor of the referral say aye. 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 Any abstentions? The matter is referred. Who seconded the motion of referral? Uh, yeah, that would be me. Okay. Sorry. Um, now we have 18.098, an ordinance to delete sewer use from Chapter 260 of the Northampton Code book. And it simply would, um, deletes the chapter and adds in place of reserved sea water use regulations listed on www.northamptonmass.gov. Okay. Uh, is there a motion on this ordinance to refer? So moved. To legislative so matters. Second. Does it Second. go anywhere else? <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, are you getting up to provide any? No, uh, no I thought you had a question about it, but if it's just being referred, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, rel since it's germane to the referral, one thing you could look at in the referral is, is the practice of putting URLs in, in ordinances. That's yeah. Perhaps that's something we need to look at. Um, good. Any discussion on the referral? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 There's no abstentions, so that is referred to. Um, we have some second reading ordinances. I would like to move them as a group. Um, it's second reading. That would be to rezone a parcel on East Hampton Road to Office Industrial, uh, eliminate the business park zone, rezone conservation areas to farm forests and rivers, rezone a portion property on Federal Street to from URB to Office Industrial and rezone for residential properties on Riverside from General Industrial to URB. I'd like to move those as a group. And did you skip Second. One? I think so. Five. A, A, B, C, D, and E. A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. Okay. Motion made to refer those as a group. Uh, excuse me. To vote Order. on them as a group. <laughs> Second. Okay. Okay. Any discussion on these zoning ordinances as a, as a group? Okay. Whoever will call whenever we're ready. Uh, yeah, yes. A, B, C, D, and E. Yes. <coughs> so, um, Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Dwight Carney. Yes. Councillor Light. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Lamar. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Councillor Shear. Yes. Those are passed in second reading. We have two ordinances left on the same subject. Um, Handle those separately, is that okay? Versus 18.068, an ordinance to eliminate newspaper legal notice requirement for site plan review projects. Is there a motion on this? Take a motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion. Councilor Dwight, then Councilor Dwight. Just uh, <coughs> reiterating my intent to recuse myself because of a f uh, familiar relations. Councilor Bidwell. Um, I was not here two weeks ago. The plague that was going around hit me. But I was watching on television, and um, I frankly was not persuaded that uh, removal of these uh, newspaper legal notice requirements is either anachronistic or uh, or prudent. The dollar savings are are minimal, and even if there are only a few people who are accustomed to keeping track of things. Uh, by paper notices, even even if there are only a few, I think it's I think it's worth uh, sticking with it. And I I remembered that uh, about a year and a half ago, there was a re-energizing democracy uh, series of workshops and process that that, that we went through. It was the Pine Valley Planning Commission um, really sponsored it, but. It included a team of Casa Latina, the Human Rights Commission, our Housing Authority, Healthy Hampshire. And the whole thrust of, of this was looking for ways to further engage members of the public in the workings of our democracy and in the workings of, of, of municipal government. And there was a, a whole section of recommendations on disseminating information. And though there was a great deal of attention paid to what more can be done with social media and other outlets, there was also this recommendation. While there was a push for social media, participants also noted that not everyone has access to the internet, so information should continue to be available in paper versions. There was another comment from a, from a public hearing that got uh, quoted in this set of recommendations, which, by the way, it's a, it's a report that's on the city's website, re-energizing democracy recommendations. 
in this uh, this additional comment was uh, we need to have information available in print format because not everyone has access to online information or has internet or has a smartphone. And I frankly think it would be consistent with the thrust of, of the principles of re-energizing democracy to maintain these print notices in the newspaper. So uh, uh, I, will, I, will, I will vote against both of these ordinances. Uh, Six eight and six nine for for those for those reasons and encourage my colleagues to perhaps give a second thought. Um, there's a request that we recognize or ask uh, Ms. Mish, our senior land use planner, to come up and speak to this. Would would you mind? I'm confident you know more about almost everything than us. So that's your downfall. No pressure. Just um, and, and again, I was at the public hearing when it came up, but these are two really specific things: simply site plan review, and then the Central Business Architectural District is a home rule district right. that isn't addressed in state law anywhere. And I think what's misunderstood is how many of these things actually occur, right. and and the fact that. I think people think we're eliminating all of the legal notices. Could you kind of explain sure. the occasions when we do them and wh why you feel that it's worthy discontinuing having to legally notice these in the paper? Uh, I don't think they happen as often as some of the other reviews do. Right. Um, so I'll start with um, site, site plan. Um, Site plan is a um, planning board review process. It's a construct of Northampton. It's not um, stipulated it in state statute, so it doesn't um, um, follow or need to um, follow the same standards for public notice as special permits, as subdivisions, as zoning board of appeals findings, which are all um, regulated under 40A to follow a certain um, legal notice requirement. Um, and we have uh, moved, originally um, everything was required to go through special permit um, under 40A and then 25, 30 years ago this concept of site plan review um, sort of started growing. Um, so Northampton adopted an ordinance and just um, essentially said, for ease of sake, said, let's just follow the rules that um, of special permit and, and leave it at that. Over time, more and more um, projects have come for site plan review, but they're probably split um, in terms of the number requiring special permit versus site plan review um, at the planning board. About four or five years ago, I want to say, we started, um, we know that people don't see notices in the in the legal um, ad section, the classified section. People don't either take the paper or don't um, see the notices necessarily. Uh, we've done a lot more on our web page, but four or five years ago, we started requiring, which is not required in state statute, to, for everyone who's proposing a project um, in the city to post these yellow signs at the property with a specific notice of what's happening on that property um, and with more information about where to go to find out about the project, either calling or emailing or going to our website to find out about it. So no matter what the project, special permit, site plan, central business architecture, whatever hearing is happening at the um, through the boards that are department staffs, we use these yellow signs and we require that the applicants post these two weeks ahead. So this is, um, I think now people see the yellow signs and they, and they look and they know something's happening because it's been around now for several years. Um, but this also allows people who are in the neighborhood that aren't also mailed specific notice because many of these, all of these projects require specific mailing to um, the abutters within either 100 feet, 200 feet, or 300 feet, depending on the permit. So there's a mailed notice that goes for these um, projects as well as this yellow sign. Um, 
and certainly people who don't get the specific mail notice but live in the neighborhood might have a specific interest. So if they're walking or driving in their neighborhood, they're going to see this yellow sign and be able to see with this insert exactly what's happening, which is a lot more information than um, and could get to a lot more people than um, a legal notice in the paper that's you know um, in the back section. So we've done that recently in the last few years to make sure we reach a broader um, um, group of people. Um, so that's um, on the planning board side. We also require these for central business architecture review projects. And central business architecture review is also a, a locally constructed permit review process. Um, and the, um, you know, we have fewer architectural review permits, maybe um, six or seven a year. Um, and, um, uh, but we do know that particularly in downtown, you get a lot of people who are coming downtown and they see these signs. So it really draws a much bigger, um, casts a bigger net in terms of notification um, um, on the central business side because probably more people you know, wandering around downtown might see a sign. And, take and they it. trigger a mailing too, right? Central Business Architecture triggers are mailing, and this ordinance doesn't ha doesn't adjust that mailing mailings. at all. It's really yeah. just yeah. So, roughly, how many legal notices do you send on an average in a year, and how many would be eliminated by this change? Just rough numbers or percentage of that would go away? Because <clears throat> by and large, most of the most of them will still get legal notices because the state law requires it, right? Right. So, on the um, for planning board permits, um, maybe um, a third to potentially a little bit higher would be eliminated. But how many? Uh, what's an average number in the course of a year that you have to post? Oh, for site plan. Um, or for total number. You know, we do two hundred a year, and this would eliminate a third of them. Or, yeah. Know, something kind of. So, um, you know, we're actually kind of in a low. We've been in a low for a little while, so I'm just going to recalculate um, a bit um, for, for permits. But um, so the board meets twice a month. So, you know, potentially if there's a one site plan for that's, let's say there are 24 permits in a year, um, you know, spread out average. So, um, you know, if a third or a half of those were site planned, then it would be, you know, 6 to 12 or whatever that number is. So. Yeah. Um, for central business, you know, that's the only permit they review. So it would be all of their permits. Six of so, them. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions for Ms. Mish? Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Klein. And sorry. And we'll go like this. I apologize. Um, so as long as I have the floor, I first want to apologize and kind of set the record straight. I misspoke. I meant what I was trying to say um, at our last meeting is that there is a certain anachronisticness for some people in terms of um, reading print newspaper. And uh, I did get a call from a couple of constituents who were really upset. And I just want to say for the record, I actually subscribe to and read a print newspaper every day, the Daily Hampshire Gazette. So um, I'm not um, casting aspersions at all about uh, print newspaper and its worth and its use, usefulness um, to inform the, the public. But that said, this isn't a referendum, I think, about um, you know, the usefulness or archaicness or lack thereof of newspapers. What um, I'm interested in, and I kind of brought it up last time, and I know that there was a little bit of email exchange um, trying to get an answer. We got some different numbers in the Legislative Matters Committee from what we heard, then heard from Director Feiden about how much money it would actually save the city. And I'm wondering if you can put, we just asked, you know, how many permits are involved, but some monetary value to it, how much we would actually save per year if we didn't uh, send these notices to the, the Hampshire Gazette? Yeah, I can give you the, I mean, so, and Councillor Nash asked me in the interim to sort of you know, um, go through every single legal notice that we've had for the last couple of years. So I did do that, and I will say it, it definitely there's a range. Um, some years we see a lot of permits, um, and other years it, it's uh, more spotty. So um, for 
year to date, FY18, so we're not done with that yet. There's about um, just under $2,000 so far that we've spent on um, legal notices that fall under these two categories, you know, lumped together. So, because you originally had told us, I think $8,000 was what you said, and I'm just wondering, is that actually the range? It can be anywhere between $2,000 and $8,000. Yeah, I mean, we've had some really busy years where we've got permits every month, and um, and so yes, that may be the the outside. Um, and if we get, so it really. It really depends. So two to, I'd say eight would probably be the outside. Um, the, and, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say. Then the previous year was a little bit less than that, um, but we had more special permits and more subdivisions. So it's not that we're necessarily not ha not doing these permits, but they're just a different nature of permitting. So you know we don't so that we might have more. Um, heavily weighted towards subdivision and special permit in certain periods of time and less so on site plan. Mm -hmm. um, and the other question uh, is kind of specifically in response to Mr. Riefenberg's um, list that I don't, I don't know if you were here, if you heard, but the list of reasons why it's important to actually have public notice in the newspaper, including uh, the need for archival information and things of that nature. Um, so I'm wondering if that, that ki those kinds of issues would apply to the, um, the special permitting uh, notice. And, um, and I'm wondering if we have record what Mr. Riefenberg said. There were four things that he cited, or maybe we can ask him again. But just to make sure that we're not somehow falling out of um, line legally in terms of yeah. notice. We're required to um, keep a record of all the agendas. So the agendas for all the planning board is going to have planning, the site plan plus the special permit plus any other permits the boards are issuing. So we keep um, the minutes for that. We keep the agendas for all the meetings. And we have those digitally. And then we keep paper copies for a certain amount of time. Um, the city clerk's office keeps has a different standard for Record. In terms of notifying but, the public ahead of time, is there a need for that record to, um, you know, that the public was indeed notified and, um, and how, it, how it was carried out and implemented and so forth? So um, no, I'm not, uh, you know, from um, Chapter 40A standards, we, um, you know, as part of our agendas, we identify when they're posted. So, we, and it, and that's also to save time. We can't, we don't have the resources to send out to set up separate agendas from what's legally posted in the Gazette. So we sort of do one thing that it covers everything. So that's the record that we keep of the dates that they were advertised. But no, we're not, and we're, and I will also say that again, site plan and central business architecture do not need to follow 40A because they're our own constructed permitting process. Um, and we've also come up, devised other ways of notifying people, particularly, you know, outside the mailed notice um, that we think is very helpful and is broader than what people would see in the classified or the legal section. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councillor Nash and then Councillor Labarge. Thank you. Um, so first of all, I guess the signs are terrific. They, they, they've been a big help over the years in that um, it, it's, it's, I've pulled over many a time to look at and read what's going on at any particular property. Um, so um, the, the thing I'm still not clear on is how much, and I understand that the legal notices, you know, I don't want you to have to go through all of the records over the last three years, but that it, it's, I'm still confused as to how much we're going to be saving. We did some email exchange <coughs> and that I thought we landed on that it was going to be, and I'm reading it now, and you were probably just referencing <coughs> central business, that it would only be 600 a year. But, and I thought that was for the total for central business and site plan. And what you're talking about now means, I don't know, it could be $4,000, five. Uh, so I, you know, I was ready to come in here and say, well, I'm going to defend the paper, you know, over 600, you know, 600 bucks. I, I think we don't want to change protocol here, but I, 
but now we're talking about a much more significant amount of money. <laughs> so, um, so I'm not sure how we're going to vote yet. So I'm going to hear what other councilors have to say. Councilor Barge. Yes, Carolyn, um, on the mailing part, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be the responsibility of the person that is going to go in for a hearing to do the mailing? That does not come out of the city's. Well, they pay for it. So we have a permit fee, and we've um, part of the permit fee covers the cost of mailing to abutters. But we internally do the abutter notification to make sure that it's going out to the right people um, at the right time. So um, we're, our office actually puts together the posting um, for that. It's different on the wetland side. So um, because of the way the Wetlands Act was created, the, uh, the applicant is required to notify um, people, but on 40A side, um, uh, we need to provide the abutters list, but it's not, as spe it's not specified that the applicant is required to do that. That's just on the site plan approval you're talking about? No, we will still, so under all the permits, special permits, subdivision, um, at findings, those, all the permits that the boards um, uh, review, we're, uh, the state statute says that y you have to mail to the parties in interest, which are the abutters. And under site plan, the idea is to continue to do that because um, that makes, that's good practice, that makes sense. So um, those will continue to be um, mailed out no matter what permit so we do that for our central business and everything um, I will also say that there's been a put there's been many there have been many years of um, zoning reform um, um, efforts at the state level to change the requirements at the posting and the notice requirements many times that has included elimination of the required newspaper um, legal notification for even the special permits and that kind of thing. We haven't really had a major zoning reform for decades, so nothing's ever changed. But I know they're also talking about that at state level. But at this point, we're just talking about our locally derived permits. So, like with the public forum that we're doing for Willard's gravel pit. Yeah. I mean, we just. That's a little bit different because okay. that's outside of an official public <coughs> hearing, that's just general public meeting. Okay. Yeah. If I may, <clears throat> um, the legal nature of a fee that distinguishes it from a tax is that a fee must be exactly, you know, proportionate to the costs involved. Right. Therefore, if you eliminate the mailing, you will reduce the fee. Right. We're not eliminating the mailing. <laughs> not the mailing. Right. The advertisement. So um, you would have no justification well, to charge people for it if you're not going to do it. Is that fair? Um, no, because our fees don't actually cover all the costs. So, I mean, we would we could certainly redo the calculation for certain permits, but we are also um, they don't they don't specifically follow exactly what those costs are. It covers some of the costs of the legal notice and the mailing, but there's project review and. Those aspects of um, mm -hmm. the process, the permitting process. I guess I'm okay. I guess so. The, the the fee then is insufficient to everything that. Uh, I guess we I'm try to match it as guys. equal as uh, we try to match it as much as we can, but I wouldn't okay. necessarily say that now we can reduce the fees without looking at it because we typically yeah. um, have more costs than that we've um, assigned in terms of the permit fees. So the fee is a low-balled fee, essentially, that doesn't cover all the costs. It just seems like if you were to eliminate expense, that must be reflected in the fee. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hear you want to I saw Councilor Shara, and then I saw Councilor Klein, and then did it. Um, so I, I also had someone contact me who was a former librarian who was very concerned about losing um, a paper archive of these notices. So it sounds like you keep one, you keep a paper for a certain amount of time, but you keep digital 
for as long as Raph and Dave has gotten. Um, is there, do they get posted anywhere? Is, would there be a possibility for, say, also this for people who don't access things through the computer, um, could they be posted in City Hall? Could they be posted uh, at the libraries and then the libraries could choose to keep that archive if they wanted? Um, like could a notice be printed, or, you know, sent, emailed, and then the library can choose to print out a paper copy and keep it? I mean, we can post it on our <coughs> web page. That would probably be the easiest thing, or send it on the listserv, and then the library can opt to, um, you know, be part of the listserv if they're not already. That was sort of my next question is, um, could you, like, say on the planning department page, could you post these? And I know we have a system where people can be alerted for if there are things that people are on the lookout for, um, they can sign up for alerts. Could that be part of that system? Um, so people, like are really interested. I mean, we do. Business. We all all of this is posted as part of the agenda, right. so that's always going to be on on there. So um, that's another. That's a, a way that if people are on the list serve to get the notice of agendas being posted, then they're automatically going to do it. So if the library is on there, I mean, that's they'll they'll be getting that or they're getting that now. Um, so I don't know how much more we would need to do to um, to you know, make that happen. I think if they're concerned about keeping their own paper copies, they could certainly print that. Right. I mean, I guess, you know, it just seems like, I mean, we're, we're all very familiar with working with agendas and we know what to look and when to look. Um, but if, if there was, you know, if, if on your page they were sort of, they were um, set up like almost like press releases or people were there and they could go and look and click on that and it would go directly to there, it might just be uh, more user friendly for them. I mean, I, I understand that it's these are all public agendas. Believe me, I get it. <laughs> but you know, for yeah. people who are not as familiar with working in that system. Okay. Councillor Klein, then Bidwell, then Labarge. Um, so I think uh, Councillor O'Donnell had an interesting line of thinking about because I've been trying to get at you know how much are we going to save the city, but in fact, if this is um, you know, the, the money to do this public um, notice in the newspaper is coming out of fees, but it's lowballed. I'm just wondering if there's a way that we can look at the budget of the planning department to understand how much money we would in fact be saving the city as opposed to, I mean, is there any way we can get at some numbers so we can have a sense of what this means? I mean, I don't want to be pedantic about Money, but at the same time, that is our job as counselors. I think to think about to to be to be um, looking at, you know, how we're in fact saving the city money, and um, we're doing cost benefit analysis whether or not something is a useful process and procedure for the amount of money that we're expending. So it just it does feel important to me for us to have a clear sense, and it doesn't need to be down to the number, but you know what is eaten up by the fees that we're receiving versus what the city is actually expending. If we had some sense of that, I think it would be really helpful. So the only thing, I mean, so I gave you sort of the range of, um, for the legal notices for just these types of permits. And I think our budget is, and I'll have to turn to the mayor, but for our department mayor, um, we're around 200,000, is that right? For our annual budget, does that make sense? Um, <laughs> so, I, um, you know, it's it's a s small percentage. I mean, the the r other reason. I mean, what we want to do is we want to make the most effective use of our time in getting notice out to people, and we feel like requiring the notice signs, um, and uh, and so it's twofold. It's not just about the money. It's you know what makes sense for our time and effort, and. Um, how people are really getting information um, and then there's the cost side of it so um, yes we get to um, potentially save the city some money and maybe equal out that permit fee <laughs> a, a bit um, I don't have the numbers in terms of the dollars we've taken in um, for site plan um, 
and they fluctuate <coughs> so different projects have different costs associated with them because of the level of review that's required for bigger projects versus smaller projects um, 360,000 oh, 360 okay thanks um, so I don't know if that answers your question or if you think you want more details um, about that because I would have to go back and look at then, you know, our permit fee collection. But then it also would require going back in and determining which ones, what type of projects it was that came in under those fees as opposed, you know, because they could be subdivision, the subdivisions and special permits that are a bunch of bigger projects take, you know, more, more staff time for review okay Councilor for war too uh, thank you um, I get the fact that uh, these two types of notifications for site plan review and central architecture district fall outside of chapter 40a so it's totally at local discretion whether we do this um, I just uh, continue to think that whether it's six hundred dollars or two thousand or four thousand dollars out of a three hundred sixty thousand dollar budget, that yes, it is cost benefit analysis. And I think for that cost, I think the benefit of reaching some people, small numbers granted, that, that aren't accustomed to stopping and reading yellow signs as they drive by, or don't get the mail notice, or aren't going to look at a web announcement or aren't on a list serve. Yes, there's a small number of them, but there are some folks who, who are accustomed. And I also don't buy the argument that we can't point to people who actually show up at meetings because they learned about it. Uh, many times folks learn about a meeting and realize, I'm glad to know about it, but I don't need to go, go, go hear about it. So I, I, I continue to um, think that it is worth the, and I don't want to be cavalier with taxpayer dollars, but I continue to think that it would be worth the continuation of this expenditure to maintain this 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 precedent so I'm, I'm 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 still in that camp so council labarge and we'll try and bring this bring this in towards a vote yeah okay yeah. Carolyn, um, one of my residents mr um, peter jones uh, had a letter to the editor in concerns of keeping the notices with the gazette he never complains, and he's pretty smart. Is there some way that, and I have to agree with Councilor Bidwell, I think the transparency <coughs> is very valuable here because I have several residents on my ward who don't have a computer. Signage, I have to agree with what he's saying. You don't drive by, you don't look at them. And I, I, I just think it's very valuable to have that in the Gazette and talking with people. And I've talked with some engineers also already, and they said that they think it should be there. Okay. That was a comment. And so we'll go to Ward 7 Councilor, Lisa Klein. I just wanted to say for the record, I'm asking all these questions about how much money we're gonna save and not save, but um, I, I feel like the city, uh, is doing its due diligence with the signs and uh, and online lists and butter letters and uh, for these purposes it feels like that is sufficient to me so I will be supporting this. With the signs. Are there any other uh, comments, Councillor Nash? Yeah, I figured out how I'm going to vote. And I'd like to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so um, so the signs are great. And, and one of the things that, you know, we all know from doing outreach that you have to hit people three times with information. Yeah. You know, that it's got to be a flyer, or they got to hear it from somebody. And maybe that third time is they read it in the paper. And that, um, that I think that what we're talking about is changing a protocol that's been going on, I, I don't know how long, legal notices have been going on but i think it's been going on for a really long time and um and that before we start chipping away at that that i think we need to have a more deliberate discussion about how we're going to do this uh two weeks ago i voted yes with reservations mm -hmm. with the idea that we could get to the discussion tonight i haven't heard all the answers that i want to hear so but i am going to vote no but with the idea that I'm going to continue this discussion, I'm going to want to talk to the paper, I'm going to want to take up that tour. And, um, and also to, 
you know, continue talking uh, with, with our planning department as to how we do this outreach. They've been doing a terrific job at getting better at that. And um, so maybe there's a way the paper and the planning department, you know, and the legal notices can be done better so that they're easier to find. I don't know. But anyway, um, I just wanted to explain that. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to explain the vote? Anyone like to make any comment? <laughs> No, I, I was said very sincerely. It's good to explain our votes. Thank I, you. No, I, no, I appreciate that. I wasn't yes. a joke. It's not, even, it's not even past midnight. We're doing pretty well on time. Thank um, you, Caroline. For me, I yeah, I'll just say for me, I, I don't. This if it's a fee we raise from people, mm -hmm. then I'm not sure where the city is losing money. If we have a discounted fee, then do we have a discounted fee? Then you can undo the discount. But I agree. That's that's my opinion. So I will. We'll probably not not favor this. Um, right. Double check. Uh, Councilor Murphy had a personal um, uh, a family issue to take care of, so he is uh, is excused. Uh, we will have one extent, uh, abstention on this. So um, a quorum of the full council is five, but I believe a zoning ordinance still requires six, or is it five? It's six. We I want think. to check that. Six. It says the affirmative vote taken by roll call of six members. Okay. Yep. I thought so. And is this a zoning ordinance per se? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is zoning ordinance. Six votes. Thank you, Laura, very much. Uh, will be required to pass it. And I will ask for a roll call on this. Okay. Um, Councillor Carney. Yes. Okay. Councillor Dwight. Recuse. Okay. Um, Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor LaBarge. No. Uh, Councillor Nash? No. Councillor O'Donnell? No. Councillor Shera? No. Uh, Councillor Bidwell? Excuse me. Please. No. Uh, the vote is three in the affirmative, four in the negative, uh, so the ordinance uh, fails in second reading. Uh, we move to 18.069, ordinance to eliminate a newspaper legal notice requirement for projects that need central business architecture review. Is there a motion? So no moved. Motion. Discussion on this ordinance. Move the question. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> hearing none, I'll ask for a roll call whenever we're ready. Same, same threshold required. Councilor Dwight. Recuse. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Barge. No. Murphy. Is no. Councilor Nash. No. Councilor O'Donnell. No. Councilor Sheriff. No. Councilor Bidwell. No. Councilor Klein, yes. Yes. Great. That vote <coughs> is two in the affirmative and five in the negative, so that also uh, any information requests tonight? Any new business. Motion to adjourn, please. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.